This is your Daily Detroit for Wednesday, June 17th, 2020. I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Sven Gustafsson. On today's show, the Ford Broncos coming back on the birthday of one of the Broncos' most infamous former owners, O.J. Simpson. We have a bunch of quick updates around town, from restaurants withering on the vine to coffee shops, a museum opening, plus some of your feedback and ideas for statues of inspiring African-American historical figures for the Motor City. You know, Jared, this is kind of like a coffee clatch edition of uh, your Daily Detroit, if you will. Well, let's get started, my friend. Glass of Simpson, male black, 6'2", 210 pounds, 46 years old. Subject may be located in the El Toro. Well, if you lived through the 90s, then you almost certainly remember that day. June 17th, 1994. That was when former football star O.J. Simpson led police on a massive chase through Los Angeles in a white two-door 1993 Ford Bronco. Why do we bring that up? Well, as we've been telling you, Ford Motor Company is getting ready to unveil its new Bronco sport utility vehicle, and the company has announced July 9th for the big reveal. That's also the birthday of Mr. Simpson, who's probably best known today for his acquittal following a long televised soap opera-like trial in the slings of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. Simpson initiated the police chase after he refused to submit to an arrest. The chase was reportedly watched by 95 million people. Ford, for its part, told the Free Press the date of the reveal was, quote, purely coincidental. Jer, as uh, Johnny Cochran, the uh, famous celebrity lawyer who represented O.J. Simpson in that trial, famously said, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Uh, Sven, I don't know. My, uh... Look, I used to be a former marketer. I used to be one of those people. Let me tell you something. This smells like viral marketing. Like, this completely smells like, oh, we didn't think about this date. We weren't going to get any pro- press coverage for this date. Oh, no, why would we do such a thing? I mean, maybe it's purely coincidental, but I don't know. There are a number of books I have uh, read over the years. Uh, one of my favorites, actually, is Trust Me, I'm Lying which is by uh, Ryan Holiday, which is all about all the ways that companies do marketing and like they'll even do things like deface their own billboards to get attention. There's all kinds of stuff that gets done on a regular basis by these companies. So, I mean, skeptical, Jer, I'm not casting aspersions, but skeptical, Jer, is skeptical. But I will say we will know if it's a setup if that first model that rolls out on stage (laughs) is white. And two doors, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I, w- I would just add that I think that's an interesting idea that you put forth. Ford is not exactly known for taking risks with its marketing or, you know, viral guerrilla marketing tactics at all, which is not to say that, you know, it doesn't have the brain power within its marketing ranks to pull it off. It's just that they're not known for this. The only thing I really have to add is that uh, today was the day, I, I swear to God, I didn't know this, or if I did, I forgot about it, but OJ in OJ Simpson stands for Orenthal James, which no wonder he went with OJ. Uh, T-I-L, my friend. All right, so we have not caught up on what we're seeing around town in a while. And I'll be honest, Ben, I think it's just because we haven't been out much. There hasn't been anywhere to go. <laughs> no, we have been missing half of our tagline for like most of the year. Yep. Uh, but I have been itching to get out of the North End studio, but do it in a socially distanced, masked you know, safe way because stuff's still out there. It's not like you're going to find me, you know, hitting the packed bars anytime soon. I feel like having a face mask in your possession, like at least in your pocket, is going to be like the new normal. Like wallet, check. Keys, check. Smartphone, check. Face mask, check. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, for sure. And by the way, if anyone out there is listening, I've got a couple, but I'm definitely looking for some more face mask recommendations. I really like the ones with like the springy um, elastic on them. So I'm taking recommendations and links. So dailydetroit at gmail.com if you'll do that for me. But right now in my hand, I have a coffee from Milwaukee Cafe, which they're spelling in that like fancy way of C-A-F-F-E. Uh, It really reminds me of one of those European espresso bars. It is so cool. It is over right next to the Keesling, which is in the Milwaukee Junction neighborhood, just a little bit of south of Grand Boulevard and east of Woodward. And I got to tell you, it was 
excellent. I mean, it's well executed. I posted up some pictures on our Instagram. The staff was friendly and the place was tiny. Like the whole place is probably the size of this little studio room, but mm. they were slinging out coffee like crazy. And the product was really good. A friend of mine got the latte and then I got a shake rato. I think that's how I'm saying it. Unless, you know, I'm doing it completely wrong. And what is that? Well, Glad you asked. Uh, that is shaken iced Americano with a touch of cream and simple syrup, because you know how I like my fancy drinks. That sounds pretty delicious. For sure. I mean, I suggest people check this out, and you can just walk up and walk away. Like, there's no, like, getting stuck with people or being in a tight space. It really is perfect for this COVID era. Awesome. I can't wait. And you've also been uh, back to the reopened Keesling, right? No, I haven't. Oh, I, am, I thought you had. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to call ahead and be like, are there two people here? I want like no people and I want to hit the patio immediately. I just want to make a beeline for that and then I'll enjoy it because, you know, I'm not doing any indoor spaces right now. Uh So I understand, Sven, that you went out into the more outer suburbs, a place that I rarely traipse. Uh, Yes, and it was uh, it was frightening, but I, I managed to make do. We took the kids as kind of a you know celebration of the end of the school year, which was last Friday, out to Tree Runner Adventure Park. This is a relatively new place. I think it opened just a few years ago out in West Bloomfield, and uh, really neat place. It's kind of an adventure style like obstacle course park that is set up in the tree canopy in this wooded area. So it's a wooded area with lots of tall, mature trees. And there are these like bridges and zip lines and belay stations and platforms built up in the tree canopy. It's really very clever and very cool. It uses a lot of tools that I think professional arborists uh, would use when they have to scale up into the tree canopies to, you know, diagnose trees or cut branches out or or do whatever the things, you know, arborists do. So there's a lot of use of like steel cables, wooden planks, equipment. Like they're essentially, I can't remember the names of, of what they call them, but they're essentially, you know, you, you wear like a full body harness. They show you how to put it on, tighten it, make sure everything's fitting snug. And then they show you how to operate these, what are essentially like these carabiners. There's always, there's one that locks and then another one that doesn't lock and you can switch one does which. And the the whole idea, the whole system is set up so that you're constantly clipped in to a safety line, essentially a safety steel cable with a locking carabiner Mm. at all times so that, you know, if you lose your footing or you fall, you're always going to be caught by your harness and it's, it's very safe. But uh, just a really neat place. My kids kept comparing it to the Ewok village from Star Wars. (laughs) I felt kind of like I was in like a, maybe like a Super Mario video game or something like that. You know, think about it. You're, you're suspended up like 30 feet above the forest floor, sometimes more on some of these courses. And they rate these courses according to their difficulty. But, you know, you're traversing like small wooden planks. Like sometimes they're literally like tree rounds, like little lengths of like a log that are positioned vertically. So you're just stepping on the round portion of it, like the cross section of a plank, you know, that's your bridge to get across with a couple of guy wires to hold on to, to, to steady yourself and everything. But it's kind of crazy, you know, you're suspended way above the ground and, and these are unstable surfaces. So there is definitely kind of like an athletic element to it as well. I mean, I mentioned that there are different difficulties in the courses, but a lot of fun. They told me that this is a chain. They apparently recently just opened a new location at Oakland University. There's also another Tree Runner Adventure Park out in Grand Rapids. Not super cheap, I will say, but I think it's worth the splurge and great place to take kids or you know do corporate outings. I know they're big on that kind of stuff as kind of a team building exercise and stuff. So, Well, as you're going through all this, I had one thought, my friend. I thought about my childhood and I thought about the old Belle Isle Zoo and all of the crazy catterwalks that are up there. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be amazing for zip lines? Speaking of the Belle Isle Zoo, I was never there. I never went there. Mm. But what is going to become of that place? I have no idea. I mean, it's, you know, kind of getting run down as the years go on. But, I mean, I feel like that's a part of the island that needs something needs to happen. Either it needs to get activated or it needs to be pulled out or something needs to happen because it's just kind of sitting there right now. And I think there's so much opportunity of course that's how i feel about the whole island right like there's a lot of things that we could do a lot more with in that place yeah but i will say this you know i am a man of food and i haven't heard you mention food i understand there is actually a a few good places to eat in that part of town were you searching around for any of that stuff yeah we did i mean we we were there for a few hours climbing around in the trees and you know so we worked up a hunger 
my thoughts naturally gravitated toward uh, Indian food because there's a lot of really good Indian food restaurants on that kind of Orchard Lake corridor out there that I know of from just my previous exploits out in that area. So we went looking. I had, you know, dialed up a few on my phone, uh, on the Google machine. There's like that section of Orchard Lake Road between kind of where Northwestern intersects with it and then down at I-696. There's always been a whole kind of row of Indian restaurants down there. But I have to say, Jerry, that like traveling down there, the area was looking kind of rough. Like, I mean, Hmm. granted, it had probably been close to a year maybe since I had been been over there. So it's been a while and and it's a little hard to compare, you know, because I I recognize that right now a lot of places are closed because of COVID-19 and everything. But there are a lot of empty strip malls that I passed, you know, and a lot of frankly closed restaurants and stuff. One of the Indian places that I'd eaten at before, uh, we drove into the parking lot and it it looked like it was closed and probably not coming back, frankly. I mean, uh, I I love biryani and I have been looking for a good place to go. And uh, so did you find any Indian food? We didn't end up finding any Indian right. food. No, I was unable to find a place that looked open and all that good stuff. We did find a place called Kabuki. It's a Korean and Japanese place at uh, in a mall at Orchard Lake and uh, 12 Mile, just north of the uh, 696 interchange there. And it was fantastic. I had some uh, bibimbap in a, they served it in a uh, hot like stone bowl. So it was literally like sizzling to me. I mean, this thing was just like, like every bite until I'd finished it was like piping hot to the point where I was just like, my mouth was almost suffering, but it was, it was fantastic. Mm, It sounds great. So going from the West side to the East side in the inbox, we have word that Mexican Asian fusion joint Alma's kitchen uh, that was proposed for the Jefferson Chalmers area. That's at over area on the far east side of the city. Is not going to happen thanks to COVID nineteen impacting their business. Which I feel like there's a lot of restaurant projects that if people were thinking about doing them, they're either completely redrawing them or going to put the pause button on them. And that yeah. notes from the EJ Dev Co. That's the nonprofit development company over that way. One of the reasons they sent that is that they are looking for a new restaurant tenant to fill that spot, which is at the corner of East Jefferson and Lakewood right there. So it's I mean, it's a great corner. It's also close to the Gross Points and Gross Point Park, easy drive to Indian Village, all of that stuff. It's a twenty five hundred square foot space and it comes with a fifteen hundred square foot outdoor dining patio, which is I mean, that's pretty big in these times. The reason why it's important that they uh, find a tenant for this place is that the rear of the building is going to be a new location of a neighborhood resource center that's going to serve residents from around the city. Uh, So, I mean, it's a cool building. I've been by it a ton of times. I think it could be a good opportunity, especially if you're going to think of something that's a destination or something that you can drive up to and then uh, then head out again. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm bummed to hear that uh, Alma's Kitchen not going to happen. I can't say I'm surprised just Given what's going on now, definitely a tough time to, you know, launch a new restaurant and especially one, I think, you know, that was always going to be an ambitious project, Jerry. I mean, that neighborhood down there is, you know, once you get off that beaten path there, it's pretty rough back in the neighborhoods back there and definitely a challenging place to launch any kind of business, I'm sure. I mean, for sure on the inside. I mean, and then you've got that neighborhood by the canals that's pretty strong, but you know, it's still only so many people and you got to think about what's going to serve the the community there. And I mean, even on a greater sense, though, dine in restaurants just aren't as much of a thing anymore. You're seeing those kind of conversions all over the place. Then uh, one other thing we wanted to talk about, and Jerry, you flagged this, which was a tweet from Dave Chang. He's the uh, celebrity chef and restaurant owner. He's the guy behind Momofuku, the famed restaurant chain empire in New York. That he tweeted, and I'm going to just go ahead and read it. My new favorite pizza delivery chain is Jet Pizza from Michigan. We assume he means Jets. So happy they expanded to New York City. Tremendous stuff, which uh, I was a little surprised to hear this from a guy of of such stature, I got to say. A lot of folks I know that do more high-end cooking, a lot of times they just like comfort food, especially at the end end of a long day. And as far as like chain pizza goes, I don't know. I, I rank Jets pretty high up on my list because, look, dude, like I don't always have the time or the money to do the artisanal thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for delivery pizza, it's definitely, I think, near the top of the heap. He also had said that he grew up in the northern Virginia suburbs and uh, Domino's was kind of ruled the roost there. Another Michigan-based chain. I also want to just call out that uh, he 
goes on to say uh, later in the Twitter thread, the real treat in the Chang household growing up was Stouffer's. I thought that pizza on French bread was the platonic form of pizza. I totally agree, man. I grew up eating Stouffer's French bread pizza, and that stuff was the bomb. Mm. Yeah, I mean... And then he's got that show, Ugly Delicious. I've been uh, a huge fan of that. It's a Netflix series. I think that they've just got the one season out, last I checked. And um, so there's only a handful of shows, but it's a really good series. Every episode examines a different sort of style, uh, like dumplings or whatever. They do kind of an interesting take on East versus West style dumplings, like Asian and Italian style dumplings and stuff. If you watch only one episode, I highly recommend the episode that they devote to the taco. I mean, I'm serious. It's one of the smartest pieces that I've ever seen, read, listened to, whatever about food. Uh, Highly recommended. For sure. For sure. Finally, I wanted to quickly mention that the Henry Ford is reopening, which is another sign of things kind of moving forward. I know that uh, Governor Whitmer had talked about July 4th as a target weekend to kind of move us even to the next stage of this whole COVID-19 thing. Uh, But here are the details with Henry Ford, which is a favorite place for me to go to. I don't know if I'm going to be going right off the bat, but I'm, I'm encouraged to see this sign. There will be a members preview weekend for current and new members on July 2nd through the 5th, 2020. And then they're going to open up to non-members on July 9th. And that's going to cover the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation. So the big one indoors and then the Greenfield Village, which is outdoors. So, I mean, for me, again, my own personal preferences, I'm going to lean much more towards the outdoors thing. But I'm excited to see that kind of thing happen. I'm a big fan of uh, Henry Ford's museums and all that stuff in general, though. For sure. On yesterday's show, I talked about statues, and listeners have chimed in with suggestions already, Sven. We love that. So first up from Kat, I'm thinking we should recommend Elizabeth Dennison. I read The Dawn of Detroit by Tia Miles two summers ago and was so inspired by the book and Elizabeth. I live in Midtown and overlook the more Midtown three plus acres project. Yes, a building was supposed to go there, but green space would be so much better And Kat envisioned a statue of Denison right in the park there. If you don't know, Elizabeth Denison IV was born a slave and died in 1866. She was both emancipated and among the first black women to own property in Michigan and the first owned land in Oakland County. She also left behind enough money to build a church where uh, poor and rich folks could worship together. That's on Gross Seal, and that's St. James Episcopal Church. And most recently, she is also a member of the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame, which, uh, you know, after so many years, I'd say about damn time. But glad to see that. Uh, Another one is uh, from Joan. Straight up, Aretha Franklin makes perfect sense. A lot of folks talked about, like, the Motown, Sven. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's kind of what I've gone to, too. I mean, like, you know, somebody like Marvin Gaye or Stevie Wonder or maybe the Supremes. I mean, Motown would be a really obvious choice, you know, kind of a nod to the city's rich musical legacy. I also thought about Ossian Suite. Mm. Kind of a dark story, but, you know, I think there would be an interesting way to kind of, you know, tell that. He was an African-American physician who bought... A home, it's over, it's still standing today on the east side of Detroit. And his white neighbors famously essentially formed a mob and uh, started lobbing, you know, rocks and and, uh, shooting guns into the house because they were so unhappy that, you know, their neighborhood was being invaded by by a black family, essentially. Well, that was uh, super common back in those times. I remember my dad even, like my dad's generation, talking about how if a black family moved into a neighborhood... Within a week, somebody would get a pickup truck and just pull the porches off. Yeah. Like, that's just common back then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I also thought, you know, frankly, with all the efforts around kind of renaming what used to be called Harmony Park in, in downtown Detroit as Paradise Valley, Black Bottom, it'd be good to have something marking that former African-American neighborhood, which essentially is today is now, uh, you know, paved over by I-375 and I-75 in Detroit. But this was a vibrant neighborhood. The city called it slums, but there were, you know, it, there were thriving black owned businesses, pharmacies, there was hospitals, there were record stores, entertainment venues, theaters, a very important neighborhood in Detroit's history. 
Oh, for sure. And one of the places I think about that, remember when we uh, interviewed Marsha Battle Philpot for yes. the, uh, well, I think it was the Aretha. It was the episode. Aretha yep. episode, yep, after Aretha uh, passed away. So her dad owned Joe's Record Shop. And so that would be a great place to commemorate and kind of tie in with this music history and be kind of an on-ramp for folks. Because I think a lot of people still need, I mean, I remember we did that 375 piece. I was stunned with how many people did not know the history of the Black Bottom and I-375 and that sort of thing. I was just stunned by the, the reaction to that TV piece. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to your Daily Detroit. A quick reminder of two things. First off, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast so that you do not miss another episode of what's happening on your Daily Detroit. Second, if you can, if it's a possibility, think about becoming a member at patreon.com slash Daily Detroit. Independent funding helps keep Daily Detroit running. Not only do we have stickers, but Sven, we have visual proof confirmation of the arrival that they're coming of the bourbon glasses the 11.5 ounce bourbon glasses sir won't that be sweet yes and you can see a picture of those on our daily detroit podcast fans private facebook group which it's only private so that we can have really good conversations anybody can join you go ahead and find that on facebook you know we can have different conversations about the show because you know sometimes that bigger facebook page of ours gets a little unruly my friend yes it does all right. Well, with that, I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Sven Gustafsson. Thanks so much for listening. Take care of each other, and we will get through this together. <laughs>